Good morning, sir. Hello, good morning. There is a Sibram Lukman, Dr. Cloud. Hello. This is Sibram Lukman. Lukman. How are you? I'm very well, sir. I'm very well. Oh, great, great, great. So let me, um, I will need to activate your connection as co-host, right? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. So I just, I just tried to join in now so that uh, I can confirm that. Uh, yeah, I know, I know, my... I know. Uh, yes, that, that's what I expect. That's what I expect every other person to do. Yeah, so that, so that there will be no flop at the end of the day. I know, I know. Yeah. So I wish us, I wish us best on it, sir. What do you say? I said I wish you success on it, sir. By the grace of God, by the grace of God, yes, 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 yes. Thanks. So, yeah, you're welcome. I, I will need to go and come back. Thank you. Oh, 
Hello. Oh, sorry. Hello, Mohammed, how are you? Hello, can you hear me? Mohammed, can you hear me? Oh, yes, I think I should.
Yeah, I'll click on time and uh, Hello. Hello, good morning, honorable. How are you, sir? Okay, the sound is just coming in. Hello, good morning. Yeah, good morning, sir. How are you, sir? Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Good, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hoping, hoping we don't have too much of African time. We'll just be very strategic so that um, we can have a good uh, listen of the events. All right, sir. Let me see. Are we set? Are we good to go? Okay. I'm trying to change my... Okay. I think we, we still so have... Can I hear you well now? To... I can hear you very well, sir. Um, okay, I have to get, I'm trying to get my sound better. Uh, let me see, and these other guys are not in. We can hear, I can hear you very well here. Yeah? Trying to get the sound to come to my box. Uh, All right. So come on now. Are you okay now? Um, I'm trying to get the sound to my earphone, so I'll be listening to that thing. Yes, okay, great, great, great. I'm trying to All get right. the sound. Wow, I'm trying to get my sound is my earphone. Headphone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, time to test. Chad Abid, good morning all. I'm sure we had that music. That music is actually the World Summit Award uh, theme song that was done by Nigeria for the global community. And we use this to celebrate innovators from time to time. So I'm happy that um, today we'll be, um, you know, we'll be having some innovators converge, you know? to share with us some of what they have that we can actually showcase to the world once again in the year 2021. Um, at the moment, I must say that I'm very happy to um, have very eminent um, personalities in the house today. Um, so, so, so honored, greatly honored. And um, we're not, um, we are not, um, uh, oblivious of the fact that um, to some of us, it can be a very busy day, even the weekend, because I know what it is uh, for some of us and for what we do. Today will just be a day for uh, of attention to innovators around the country. And um, I'm actually Amos Emmanuel. I'm the UN World Summit Awards National Expert for Nigeria, and I feel glad anytime I'm proud to do this for the country. And um, we must say that um, we'll be seizing this opportunity to make sure that um, we continue to showcase, we continue to um, empower the people around us. And that is why we're trying to take the fight from one stage to almost the 36 states of the Federation 
including the FCC, because as, is, as we speak today, if we all dream of a digital economy, we are not going to purchase a digital economy. It will take you and I to solve one, take action on one of the MDGs, solve one problem at a time, and we collectively can build a digital economy over a period of time, and of course, very realistic time. And that's why this platform of Innovation Bed Africa um, has been very, very encouraging that we continue to push. So today, um, just like I, I will um, um, be admitting people to join us, I will just take some time to share what the program of the day is. It's not a workshop. It's not a big time. It's not a talk talk day. We don't do conferencing. It's actually the major things that impact us as a citizen, citizen and for what we plan to do and we, that we actually have by ourselves have contributed over, over the time. So just take, uh, permit me to run through the program of the day this morning. This video will be available for the public. And besides the very sensitive project, I mean, the, 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 the meeting, um, it, it will always be there on the Innovation Bed um, um, YouTube channel for everybody. Uh, to participate, I mean, to be able to view over time and many times over. And um, I'm also very happy that we try to see, anytime we're having this kind of program, we try to see how we can actually speak to undergraduates who are currently in school. Graduates who are practically out of school and perhaps don't even know what to do to themselves. And perhaps some of us who are graduates, we are on jobs, but we need to improve on our workforce, you know, mechanism to, so that we can be more competitive. And then in the house at the moment, um, for me, uh, to have identified one of our special guests um, is Honorable, and in fact, Honorable um, Sonny, Aruna Sonny from uh, Nassau State. He's actually the senior special advisor to the executive governor of Nassau State. And um, I'm sure we're going to take um, his comments from time, but just permit me as we expect many others we are presenters as well as special guests, so that we can just have a rundown of what today's program is like, so that we can have a general idea. Thank you. So just permit me to share my screen very briefly. Hello, can you hear me now? Hello, can you hear me? Okay, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, where are you with you? Yeah. Okay, yeah, we can, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Let, okay, let's do something. Maybe, let, uh, perhaps, let, let, let us um, take um, our honorable uh, special, senior special assistant to the governor, Nasa State. We can actually just give him his time so that he can actually share a word or two with us because so that we don't tie him down in the course of our program today, but obviously we'll be glad to go back to him over whatever transpires today and if there are many other people who will be joining us today. So, uh, your name is sir. Yes, yes, Mr. Amos. Um, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity given to me and this time given to me for a wonderful innovation time. And uh, thank you. I would like to use this opportunity to to um, use a kind of a protocol in order to ease some of the work and uh, all protocols really observed. Uh, I'm delighted to be here on the day of Innovation Bed Smart City and Connected Communities Youth Tech Talent Development event to participate in discussion on intended collaborations so accelerating the digital transformation of Africa. I would like to start by commending the commitment of the initial uh, Innovation Bet Africa to implement ambitious reforms and bring about the UN World Summit Awards 2020 Global Competition in the context of the country's ongoing youth digital innovations and young African developing solutions for different, uh, for different societal problems. These efforts are bearing tangible results and have laid the foundation for a credible path to fiscal sustainability and collaboration. My presence here is a testament to the tre tremendous opportunity we have to use digital technology as a game changer for economic development of our own great country. 
Nigeria has so much more to learn and gain from the digital revolution. A lot of change in Nigeria since the huge wave of internet and mobile adoption globally today. Access to smartphones and web is growing. Indeed, there are about millions of mobile subscribers in Nigeria, millions of internet users, and reasonable percent of them can access. the internet on their home, take the citizens, social economy lives, drivers. On, on behalf of national state government to the Global UN World Summit Award conducted for Nigeria for programmers foundation as the eminent national expert for Nigeria. The growth in adoption of these trends amongst Nigerians present huge opportunities for the young local content developers, which is important for government ambitions on economic diversification. However, only a small number of individuals and enterprises are currently taking full advantage of new digital opportunities available. It will be recalled that programmers volunteer to ha have innovation programs for the youth for more than 10 years in the new way for involving fintechs, manifestos, currently renews future innovation strategies on global initiative collaborations. With, with multiple international organizations such as UN World Summit Awards and many more. <coughs> Sorry. Having over a million digitally skilled young people in Africa is not good enough. You can do more than that. If many young people have their right skills, they will build businesses, create jobs, and boost economic growth across the continent. The natural state government wishes its indigent youths to take advantage of the unfolding innovation by tech talent and enterprises incubation 2030 in partnership with the UN World Summit Award, UN ICT for State, Space for ICT Initiatives, and many more to involve world-class producing entrepreneurs that will digitally transform existing brick and mortar models prevailing prevalent in the state to competitive, smart, connected, connected regional economy. Our state will also continue to encourage and support the young innovators and local content developers in the area of hardware and software development by ensuring that they are protected through requisite regulations. We have accepted that Nigeria must take the leadership role in Africa's ACT ecosystem. Therefore, we are, enable, we are amenable to public-private partnership to drive the state's project. We are therefore assert that 2021 must be a year of action. As government preparation for the fourth industrial revolution, which is predicted to happen globally in the very near future, the state government had approved with the public-private partnership for building a technology village in the state. The establishment of this center will encourage investment in ICT sector, which will also produce the required skill manpower for the industry. I wish all innovative competition and to many undergraduates from university, polytechnics, colleges of education, and more are also invited to learn from these innovators as role models in the country. I wish to thank you for inviting me to be part of this important discussion. I also warmly invite you to collaborate with the states and invest more towards encouraging the local content developers in Nigeria. And assure you that it will be seamless and mutually beneficial partnership. I would like to end by reaffirming our commitment to work with you, Mr. Amos, and assure you of the continued support of the state for the innovation, bed, smart cities, and connected communities, youth, tech, uh, tech talent development, and many more interventions programs. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for giving me such wonderful opportunity right. to have this message to you. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Your Excellency. Thank you so very much. And our special Thank regard you. to His Excellency, Executive Governor of Nassau State. So we really, really are very humbled. We are very, very humbled. And uh, I'm sure in due course, this incubation program will get initiated, inshallah, and of course, 
this is going to expand the rest of the country as much as we can. So thank you so very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. So All right. um, just like I had, um, wanted to share earlier on, I want us to say what other, uh, what the program of the day was going to look like so that um, at this point, I want to share my screen so we can just have a rundown of the program. And, um, Hey. Hello. Hello, is my sound good? Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. So, um, first is that um, what Innovation Bet Africa is doing today is that um, this time this year, 2021, is actually another anniversary of the UN World Summit Awards Nigeria. Um, national pre selection, which we do on a yearly basis. And what this entails is actually to connect all you know, homegrown innovations that we have across the country and um, put them together and be able to nominate the very best innovations that we have around and be able to uh, nominate some of these projects to the Global World Summit Awards database for the global competition. So today we have some projects that um, we are actually going to select the them because you know, we really cannot um, have every one of them online. And then one of the very important messages that we need to take today is that the part of this country is under uh, very poor internet connectivity, especially certain regions in the north. So some speakers today may not, have, uh, some speakers that we have from those regions We'll be having some other opportunities for them to be able to, uh, for them to be able to do their presentation. But as we have it today, we are going to take all the all the other valid and confirmed presenters that are going to be speaking with us today. And let me just say that the um, work of the National Pre-Selection Committee in, the, in Nigeria is um, to go after the content creativity, which is the creativity of idea and goals quality and content innovation of each of anybody's students. If you want to look at the social entrepreneurial aspect that is sustainability, economic potential. And of course, we want to look at the digital implementation, design, functionality, interactivity, as well as the social value and social impact and solidarity of this product in the Nigerian ecosystem. So we feel happy on behalf of myself, and the chairman of the United Nations World Summit Award, um, Dr. Peter Brock, will bring to you this program today. And of course, on behalf of my other co workers, I mean, um, network group partners of the UNICC for Seed, in the presence of um, Professor um, uh, uh, Steven of Oklahoma University, as well as um, Professor Amjad Omar of the Heisberg University of Science and Technology, um, they are a part and critical uh, players in this um, project of Innovation Bed Africa. And particularly that this time, this project is, um, is, um, is going through a launch in Nigeria. And of course, uh, we're honored by, we just uh, listened to Honorable uh, from uh, the Senior Special Assistant to the Executive Governor of Nakarawa State, who just um, gave us a good real message from the, from the state government. And we're indeed very, very happy about this. And we also have our dear colleague, His Honor, His Excellency, the Honorable um, uh, Senior Special Assistant uh, to the Executive Governor of uh, Zampara State, Honorable Mohamed Tambura, SSA on ICT. He's actually one of those that we told you that Zampara is Zampara is a major point of the action of this connectivity issue. And we've been talking, and of course, he will also join us before the event is over. Um, we, we feel glad. Of course, we also have our evidence, Adjia Khadija Tiaya, the head of innovation, training, research, and development bureau for ICC in Bauchi State. She's been doing a great work, and of course, she's a major player of this innovation bed, and she's been working so hard for the Innovation Bed Africa, which is going to be something for feminization 2030, in trying to see how we can really bring the, the digital power powers of um, what women can do in the digital world. So the um, Innovation Bed Africa Feminization 2030 is actually something that some critical and very eminent Nigerian women who are doing so well in IT would help us to incubate some of these women. 
So we have um, a producer and the producer of the product called Oga Donate. This product is by Mr. Shegun Oke. He is an entrepreneur and an innovator, former MD, Africa Imperial Imperial Incorporation, uh, over 20 years of work experience and all of that. And um, this producer is to present on his product and his registration and sub, uh, registration number of this product on the UN World Summit of World Database is um, project ID 7020. So the next is um, uh, Hamzat Lawal, an activist um, who has successfully led grassroots campaigns in over 40 countries and over 15 years experience in the, oh, you always, always have this on, the, on that program webpage, so I'm not gonna waste bore us with that detail. And um, Mr. Hamzat is actually to work on his innovation called Follow the Money. And of course, that, is, that product is 10003 on the database of the World Summit Award for year 2021. And next there, we have um, Azir and a youth winner, because I can remember uh, Mr. Jacob Swafo has been a, a youth winner when he was much younger. And I can remember um, we actually met for the first time, even when he won from Nigeria, we actually met in, in Colombo, Sri Lanka from 20, around 2022, 2024. And of course, with then, the young man has been doing some very, very outstanding great things. And today, he has a product we call I Am Africa in the culture and tourism category. So Mr. Jeff Okora, for which I'm saying I'm sure he's in the house, will soon uh, be able to be talking to him soon. Another of the critical players here is um, Adelike Sebo, Okikijisu. Um, these young guys are doing so, in fact, so greatly. And my power and my vision is to see how I could actually move this across every coast across the country, and not just within one aspect or one portion or one, uh, one, one region of the uh, 36 states of the Federation, including um, Africa. Um, Adilake Okikijesu is the innovator of um, uh, Kiki Farm, project number 2016. And um, this is under the health and well-being category. After that, we have Ibrahim Lukman. Uh, Ibrahim Lukman is actually the innovator on the GR Cloud. And in fact, he's actually a product management executive and holds a certification in building digital products, um, products analytics and product management. As experience in um, building healthcare solutions ranging from bioinformatics to diagnostic systems. And he has done so much that I'm sure his details and all these uh, very powerful Nigerian Nigerians um, can be found on this. Um, pre selection event uh, page as you, that you use in registration. I have one other man who is actually right now is in transit and he's actually been trying everything possible not to miss this. His name is Ogene S. Shomomo. He's actually the convener of the Jury uh, Justice and Rectitude Advocacy Initiative, promoters of the jury system in Nigeria, which is to guarantee inclusion in governance and citizen participations in criminal adjud adjudication process. <laughs> because these um, young men are doing so immensely that we actually, aside just promoting them for the world racing, we are also promoting this initiative for every leader across every corner to ensure and to know that digital empowerment for our people and the promotion of the products therein are very essential for the national. And then subsequently, we'll be able to. I can also also show that. Um, <laughs> in the last 10 years of our volunteerism on this project, the Nigerian, the WSA Nigeria uh, project has done so well. I must say that we can actually give it to Nigerian youth because in the last 10 years, we actually can follow the record that in 2021, in 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2020, Nigerian youth have been winning and we have been putting very innovative products in the world. And that is one of the things that we need to be encouraged and promoted for. So, men and um, women, I think um, at this stage we will be able to narrow down and see some of the presenters that we can actually engage. And I think this might need to continue in this particular order. Um, in the house, let me try and identify. The presenters I have here, I have uh, Mr. Jeff Okura for. Mr. Jeff Okura for, please. You can just um, unmute and uh, your good morning. 
Mr. Jeff Okorafo. Hello, can everyone hear me? Good morning. Very well, yes. Everybody. Can hear you. Good, mo good morning, all. Sorry, Mr. Amos, am I expected to write okay. uh, on with the, your left one there? Uh, left one there. My product uh, is still in attention. Uh, the next one there still needs some attention. Uh, Mr. Jeff. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to you. We'll come back to you. I'm just trying to identify the potential, and perhaps let me um, say that uh, as, I, as I recognize you, I'm trying to make all of you focus so that you'll be able to have enough power to administer your connectivity and your talk on the platform. I also can identify Mr. Ibrahim Lukman. Mr. Ibrahim Lukman, please, your word. Good morning. And I've actually made you a co-host. Okay, good morning, sir. Excellent. Good morning, everyone. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. That was good. Any other any other presenter in the house? Um, Mr. Anwar Mohamed. Yes, sir. Kiki Farms is here, sir. Oh, yeah, Favo Adeliki. Yeah, I can get Mr. Favo Adeliki. Uh, please unmute yourself. And um, just to be sure, I've also made you a co host. I made you a co host. Favor Adeliki, please, your word. Good morning. Hello. Favor Adeliki. Kiki Farm. Oh, good morning. Can you hear me? Excellent. Yes, Vadiliki. Good morning. How are you? Okay, I just want to be sure that your well, connectivity sir. is fine. We'll get back to you. Let me just go okay. around uh, for every other presenter I'm able to identify. Um, sorry, Vadiliki, uh, you are speaking to us from what stage? On my phone, sir. No, from what stage? I, I I can't hear you. Which state? Which state? Which state are you speaking from? Are you joining us from oh. your state? Oh, Lagos State. Lagos oh, State. From Lagos, Lagos State. state sir. Excellent, excellent. All right, yes. Um, let yes, me have um. All right, sir. Uh, let me have. Uh, let me just take a word from. Okay, Ibrahim Lukman. Ibrahim Lukman. Let's just be sure that I have made you Ibrahim Lukman. You co-host already. Yeah, you are co-host, yes. Ibrahim Lukman, good morning. Good morning, sir. Excellent, yes. So, at least we know that your connection is fine. Um, I'm, perhaps I'm going to move in no particular order. Uh, maybe, uh, let me see, so that uh, we, we can take advantage of the people available and that their internet can actually enable to work. Um, will that be... Uh, Bashir, uh, Abubakar Bashir, are you a presenter? Oh, yeah. Bashir, how are you? Please, I'm mute. your voice. I'm making you the co host. Yes. Abubakar Bashir. Good morning. Abubakar Bashir to be joining us on the live. Abu Bakar Bashir, are you there? Okay, right. Um, let me just be back and see the other I have so that we can know uh, we have a um, person to be. 
Um, the first person to be Mr. Shagunke. That's um Ogadonet. Next we have um Hamza Lawal. Then we have our next um, Jeff Okurafo. No, 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 no. Uh, Mr. Jeff, are you ready? Mr. Jeff. I'm not sure. Okay, I can see it. I'm going to take it. I'm I know this can be a lot of work, but then I've done this many a time. But, um, it's not the gear. Look one, Ibrahim, and that is their cloud. Then, 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 let me just um, uh, leave the floor to at least the yes. presenter now. Sorry, sir. I will, Sorry, sir. I will have... Yes. Whoever, yes. whoever is not talking should just mute their mic. Okay, please. Um, could you please mute your mic if you're not talking? Um, okay, to be mute all our mics if we're not talking. Um, let me um, pick on. Um, okay, let me just show that please. I'll be knocking them off. Um, Chicken fans, are you ready? Chicken fans. Yes, I'm ready. Sir. I'm ready. Sir. Can you just do all the honor? Can you just do us the honor of presenting your project? Within 10 minutes, at oh. max, 15 minutes, please. You know, it can be very strategic to be okay, sure sir. we okay, take sir. advantage of what internet can help us for today. Thank you. Okay, please take okay, the floor. Sir. You are a co-host. Go ahead and share your screen. Um, Mr. Marcus, Isaac, please can you mute your connection? Can you mute your connection? We are having um, Mr. Adeleke Favor, Tiki Farm. So we can take his presentation. Okay. I'm on it, sir. Okay. Can you see can you see my screen loud and clear? Yes, yes, please. Okay, uh, thank you so much for giving this opportunity. So this picture here basically shows why we started Kiki Farms, right? So here you can see a healthy and happy grandma. This is my grandma here. And the basic reason why I started agriculture, leaving computer science to become a farmer, is basically because of health. And my grandma has a diabetic issue for well over 35 years. And always growing up with my grandma, seeing her always unhappy, visiting the hospitals, you know, talking very sad about healthcare issues and going visiting the hospitals, high blood pressure. You know, the tears and the unhappiness triggered me to think about what could be this possible solution. And that was when I discovered that, oh, we can start with growing organic vegetables and organic fruit you know, for her to basically help her enjoy the value of a healthy lifestyle. So um, I will be sharing my slides now. So um, there's a secret to good health. Would you love to know it? If you would love to know it, Kiki Farms is here to share the value with you. 
And this has been something that, okay, my grandma visited the general hospital here in Igondo. And right now we have over 30 customers from that general hospital based on the value that people can see in the impact of my grandma's life, right? She's no longer visiting the hospitals as regularly based on the fact that she's eating healthy and organic farm products. So here's a question. Do you believe Nigeria can become the food basket of the world? If you truly believe that, that then Kiki Farms is ensuring that that dream can be possible because we are unlocking the limitless potentials in their cultural value chain to promote the value that we have and change the narratives in agriculture. So think healthy farm producting Kiki Farms is what we're doing. So what's the problem that we're solving? Over 7 million Nigerians suffer from hunger and malnutrition. 26 million small oldest um, farmers suffer from losses on low yields. And 90 million plus Nigerian youths are unemployed and suffer from um, underemployment. 750 billion naira worth of food are lost annually. And Nigeria is ranked for seven country that suffers from healthcare issues globally, right? So what is Kiki Farms doing? We are a very startup of company that uses technology to scale up the production of local and organic food products, ensuring more nutritious meals safe are readily affordable and accessible to all Africans with a vision to build a hill and healthy Nigeria. So what are we doing? Basically, we're reducing post service losses. We're educating farmers. We're creating job opportunities. We are ensuring that Nigerians get access to healthy farm products any day, anytime, with the help of technology to grow and scale. So what is our competitive advantage? We, we understand the demands of data in Nigeria. We work with production tracking to track every, every single of our production. We have the best prices. Our prices are always from the farm and are very affordable for all Nigerians. We have a very strong supply chain. We have access to over 500 farmers across the country and we're reducing losses. So I'm talking about our business model. We are current buying, buying demand. We forecast it into the future and serve all our customers across six states in the country at the moment. We do farming clustering, you know, and give them specifications to grow organic. So what do we do? We are an integrated farm. Apart from the fact that we work with farmers, we as well have our own farms in three states in the country that is lagos Ogun state and ibadan right so um yeah we have our farm so we as well give um grow organic farm products because we are an integrated farm we do livestock fruits and um, vegetables so here is our products from chicken cows or um, moving dried catfish our products are fast selling in about 20 supermarkets in the country at the moment and um in six states in the country so this is the this is the amazing value that our customers enjoy from Kiki Farms. Every day we feed over 300 families, you know, um, weekly. So um, these are our customers' our attraction, basically feeding 500 families weekly. We have a products in five state joint supermarkets, a network of 500, uh, 500 farmers. We are basically seven companies as well. So we have over 15 value chains of our customers, be it from restaurants, hotel, bars, you know, um, corporate organizations, you know, processors, resellers, and things like that. We've been able to make a, a revenue of $10,000 in 2020. We are a team of 12, right? Uh, yeah, so these are financial traction. So here is the market that we're serving. The food market in Nigeria is a $60 billion industry. According to the National Bureau of Statistics in Nigeria in 2019, yeah, so we are basically targeting how we can feed 1% of the Nigerian population in 2025. So here is our milestone. We want to become the biggest Digital agricultural platform in West Africa by 2025. Once we take advantage of AFCTA to scale our products globally, once we be able to feed two percent of the Nigerian population, once we build a network of three thousand farmers. So we have so much value training young people over six thousand students. Right, this is basically what we want to do. So these are uh, the core team here. We have people that we employ full time and part time as well. Right. So these are financial projection. We want to be able to make. Um, since we've been able to make $20,000 in 2020, we want to be able to make it $40,000 in 2021. That's currently this year, we've been able to make about $20,000 at the moment. And we feel that by December, we would get to the peak season and we can do even better. So these are our financial projections, how we want to get to $120,000 by um, 2023, right? So these are amazing things that we do. What's our CSR? We commit to 5% of our yearly profit to giving back to the needy and the orphanage homes. We have our corporate impacts, we have our economic impacts. We train people and give back to the society, give back to the orphanage homes, right? Um, we give them free chickens. We have videos, testimonials to show for that. So why do we basically need the support? We want to be able to increase our farm productivity, investing in technology that can be used to get equipment to do even better. Our product ought to be in shop price by now, but the demand of shop price is way more than 
what we have because we don't have enough technology to meet their demand and even grow because we have our products right now in Canada. We have our customers in Malaysia that we supply, we export to regularly, right? So if you get financial support, we're going to do that and ensure that we build our logistics, right? So we can be able to do, deliver more. We want to be able to invest in our branding and marketing. We want to complete our mobile application. I guess we want to launch the biggest organic farm store in Nigeria at the moment, whereby people get access to fresh farm products. Apart from that, we're going to have our organic food mart where we're going to prepare different organic jelly cases ready to eat food that people can enjoy. And we want to launch the biggest organic supermarket. So these are things that we need your support for. These are things that we want to do. So we are an award-winning brand. We've got award from JCI. We get award from Lagos State Government. We as well supply Lagos State Government talkies last year, December. And right now, we are still on that deal. We're going to supply even more this year. So these are things, these are our brand, ensuring people get access to help healthy food to so ensure that they are happy, right? So we slaughter fresh farm products and we deliver to our customers, right? So the joy that comes from eating organic and healthy farm products, the smile, the happiness, the comfort, and the satisfaction from our customers, right? So... For our customers at one party, we basically deliver and we'll be, we have two we, we have a wedding that we're going to prepare as so for today. And we have another wedding um, coming Saturday, that's October 2nd. So we do as soon we add value to our product. So apart from customers getting life goods, we add value today. We have process ready to cook and we also have ready to eat um, farm product. That's why customers' weddings, they call us events, they call us. So you can see this is what I do, organic, healthy um, vegetables train young people, been able to train over 500 young Nigerians across three states in the country, both online and offline. So you can see the value of our products. They are ready to eat. We've been exported, you know, uh, the demand is really huge. So um, basically I've been able to talk about the value that Kiki Farm is offering and how we intend positioning the Nigerian agriculture globally, because we are here to unlock the limitless potentials through value addition and ensuring that we build a hail and head in Nigeria. So this is basically what we're doing at Kiki Farms, right? So thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I strongly believe that we are going to build a hail and head in Nigeria for Nigerians and get access to, ensuring that Nigerians get access to healthy farm products. So thank you so much. I'm truly thank grateful. You. Thank you. Kiki Farms here to deliver thank excellence. You. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Yes, sir. Oh, great. I didn't know if you more. Uh, that, that, uh, that, 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 Actually, actually, my Nigerian, right? That's actually my Nigerian, and I'm quite, quite proud of this. Very, very, very proud of you. And um, let me say that, um, um, okay, let me just confirm that you properly registered, and this is actually because the whole essence of today is to prepare you. I'm sure you are used to all this, and that um, even when you win, you still have to defend your project. And when you defend your project, the world is actually asking you questions and the like. But then, you know, sometimes you know, you don't understand. You sometimes compare your local environment as if it's as good as theirs. But that's why we always look at it in a very democratic setting when national experts come together and we are looking at projects. Because when this project has to do the right of things that start to be our society, you know, see the, I mean, see, see environment, see development, and, and the, the likes of that. So, but then, um, okay, I had a uh, Jeff. Um, who else is in the house? So thank you so very much, Kiki Farms. Um, you have had your presentation, uh, your submission accurately. Just make sure that the, your, your submission was um, paid attention to the, the, to the detail of that submission page and the likes and the likes of that. Um, let me um, uh, let's stick with the design development. Okay. Hello. Good day, everyone. Yes, how are you? How are you? Yeah, very well. Okay, okay. Um, I think I'm. Am I? Can I move on now? Please go ahead. You have the floor. Okay.
Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Abraham Lukman, and I'm the founder of Dr. Cloud. So, um, according to Alpha School of um, Public Health, in the 2016 report, the non communicable disease contributes to 71% of global debt, totaling 41 million. And 19% of these debts are among youth at the prime time. While 15 million of the debts are dominated in Africa. So, and according to economics, they say it, it will become a cumulative, uh, it will result to a cumulative global loss of $40 trillion by 2030. So non-communicable disease has been established as not just a clear threat to human health, but also to global economic development. My father was in state of conversion for over two hours without access to proper medical care because of the transfer from one hospital to another. And eventually we lost him. This was actually, this was what led me to Dr. Cloud, and we started as an NGO before transitioning into edge technology. So Dr. Cloud is a telemedicine platform that connects patients diagnosed with medical, uh, with non-communicable disease with their life, the network of licensed medical specialists for one-on-one -on -one medical advices, proper health management, and also, offers a sensitization pl platform that focuses on emphasis of risk factor prevention and right approach to care for the general populace. Our focus is to build the world, is to build a, a, an African et hub where people have the confidence to get affordable health care and improve accessibility to quality healthcare. So this is our platform um, interfaces. These are these are our platform interfaces. We have a we are we are a pioneer social healthcare platform in Nigeria, even at Africa at large. So our technology we leverage on a mobile technology. And also we, we have artificial intelligence that recommend, which is a recommender system to improve medical practices. So our competitions include Mobile Health, Doctor uh, KF247. But most of these platforms offers one-time appointment compared to our long-term relationship between patient and care specialists, which is our focus for better health outcomes. We, we have an algorithm that matches them together and ensures that they have a long-term relationship based on user, uh, uh, a customer, uh, our patient uh, willing to, to continue to have that relationship. Over the time, uh, we have tested our products with a group of medical experts. We have a partnership with Nigerian Medical Association and Medical Dental and Council of Nigeria where we vetted our, uh, our doctors. At the moment, we have over 16 medical specialists. I'm testing with uh, 15 uh, patients with diabetes and other diseases around the NCDs. We have partnered with more than three uh, health advocates. So our customer segment is focused at uh, patients with NCDs, pregnant women for post prenatal and postnatal care, and also the general populace. We all know the impact of non uh, of COVID nineteen, uh, which caused restrictment in movements of people. While in, in Nigeria we know that there's limited bed space for people, and they increase while 
coupled with the increasing number of patients, leaving many patients to be unattended to. And we're also aware about the extremely low number of doctors at the moment and the current brain drain trend that is going on. So it is quite glaring that we need a platform like Dr. Cloud that's, that, that connects, that easily connects patient remotely for virtual therapy, teleconsultation, and one-on-one -on -one medical advice online. Our business model is quite uh, uh, simple. We leverage on a freemium, we leverage on a freemium business model, which gives um, us the opportunity to onboard as many as possible users, and then they have access to our services. Then we, we try to drive them through a strategy, a customer-centric approach, driving them to a, a, a subscription-based uh, services where they can add, have access to uh, uh, so much more value-added services. Also, we have a one-time appointment too. The subscription, we also have a, we're also looking with a partnership with hospitals that offers that can use our platform to offer teleconsultation to outpatients. We are a team, we're a team of eight people at the moment, me and two other co-founders who are, who are engineers. And we also have a business development uh, person who has worked with Bank of uh, America, Mary Leach. And we have a legal team and also we have a border uh, we have somebody who's an advisor and thank you thank you so very much thank you that was um yeah, cloud Brian thank you so very much and um uh, yes, sir. To you and I have some decent uh non Nigerian innovation health sector. And um, by that track and what we're doing, uh, we are very sure that uh, uh, it will go very fast, very, very fast. Thank you so very much once again. So after um, having listened to uh, Brian Lickman, here at I permit uh, me to uh, okay, identify again another very powerful and strong innovator the Nigerian Italian space, the, um, Mr. Jeff Okulafe. I will try to see if it's a connection with the, the better now. Mr. Jeff Okulafe. Okay, so we have Mr. Jeff Okurako is taking action on SDGs and original culture. Can I mute yourself, Jeff? Can I mute yourself, Mr. Jeff? You say I mean some problem. Um I mean me to just um I'll come back with Jeff. And um, I think we have Mr. Shoma, Mr. Shoma Mutu, joining us in the just part of me now. And then I mean, we just take a message from World Summit Nigeria. And just take a message from World Summit Nigeria.
is the world shall be our war. Oh, recognizing inventors is the world shall be our war. Mr. Eshamamo is the next um, uh, presenter. I think, um, okay. I thought he's the one joining us now, but then he was in transit and I think he's safe to talk soon. Um, well, um, uh, Mr. Jeff Okura just lost his connection again now. Okay. All right. I got his message. Also, I apologize for my own network. I traveled out of town, carried my home internet, thinking it will be good, and um, the network glitch is in excess. That is Jeff Okorafo. Um, okay, so he's actually having that uh, network challenge, and we can understand, like I told you, quite many producers uh, might be unable to present, but between now and the final date of our nominations, we will have one way or the other to try to get them to um, send these inputs across to the um, National Preservation Committee for a work to run up by the end of um, this month. Because there will not be any further extension. All right. So uh, there we've just heard from Mr. Jeff Okurafo. The network glitch is rather so much that we may not be able to do much as uh, he's also in transit. One other producer, and um, Mr. Shamamo, um has um, promised to join me in two minutes. So, okay, I think before then, 
I just um, identify one young lad from Benway State, Mr. Nathaniel Eru. Benway State, please. Good morning or is afternoon now. So how do you do? How is Benway State? Unmute yourself, Mr. Eru. Unmute yourself. Good morning. It's morning in Benway State. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, sir. We are in afternoon. Are we in morning in Benway? No. Mr. Eru, good morning. Okay. Uh, networks will just hope. Uh, with. Okay, yeah. Um, there's one of our um, senior candidates in the house, Abu Bakr Bashir. Who is? Abu Bakr Bashir. Is your connectivity okay now? Abu Bakr Bashir, is your connectivity okay now? Hello, is your connectivity okay now? Aji Abu Bakr Bashir? Abu Bakr Bashir is joining us, I'm sure, from Gombe. Is your connectivity okay? Can you unmute? Okay. Um, okay, let me say, um, Mr. Okay, for um, uh, Mr. Dileke. Mr. Dileke. Hello, Mr. Dileke, are you with me? Yes, I'm here, sir. I'm here, sir. Excellent. Um, maybe while uh, I wait for um, these other people to any other one, any other person to be set. Um, can we just take some time to review your submission? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, right. sir. So um, let me just share my screen again. So I I verify this because even in terms of submission, so many people need um, help so that they can they can do the right thing. Um, your product is um, on my page one here. Um, you are Kiki Farms, right? Yes, I am, sir. Yes, I am, sir. Let me share some. Let me optimize video clip. Let me just say what I'm trying to do is this. This. Um, can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes, we can see your screen. We can Excellent. see your screen. Excellent. So that um, Kiki Farms. Now, uh, some lessons here that. Um, some people do make a lot of mistakes are that um, their submission, uh, they don't pay attention to the details being asked. I think for one, um, Kiki Farms did a great, a great job here. Uh, you guys did a great job here actually. And uh, because you can see the, all the questions properly attended to. And I think this sometimes cause a positive in the hearts of jurors, you know? And I think I particularly, I was very impressed that um, you paid attention to the detail. And of course, your presentation also had, I think you had videos, right? Your presentation had, a, this, they say here, 
please provide link to a short video. And I think, yeah, you also have a short video because the whole essence, the whole essence to why this should be the way is requested is because an average juror like myself would want to, we don't have, people don't have that time. They want to click on an image or a file and that file should be able to speak and run, have a good rundown of what your project is doing. You know, without wasting so much time, people should be able to understand what your project is all about. And um, before they begin to download the app and begin to do testing. So because jurors are not very um, patient to be beaten around about the bush and all of that, they quickly can just ignore your product because they have thousands, they have hundreds of projects to, to deal, you know? And for me, this is about the only time I see my countrymen projects. Once I not do, round up my nominations by the 30th of September, this view becomes blocked. And I may not know what country products I will be evaluating. So that is the way the jury environment is about. So your projects are such that if they are not complete, I was just, okay, Mr. Shamomo, thank you so much for joining in. I know it's, so, it's been so tight for you. Uh, and um, of course, with the, the trouble of being in transit for one thing or the other, and I'm sure you're also helping us to engage as many governments to do what we are all talking about here. Um, nice to have people like you. <laughs> Thank you. So um, we, we then don't waste too much time so that I can actually um, give you, um, the other speaker, Mr. Jeff Okurafo, has actually confirmed that um, his network glitch may really not allow him to actually continue. He's been in with us and for as much as um, he has been, but um, is um, getting to, you know, render sound and presentation has been very difficult. So I think we will excuse him. So I, this time I will welcome my dear friend, uh, a very powerful innovator. In fact, um, when I had the opportunity of meeting Mr. Sharma, I was like, um, there's so much he, he will do on this network and in this incubation in, in some time to come but that we'll have an opportunity to listen to what um, he's been innovating about for the Nigerian society. So Mr. Shamomo, please, I will now, I would actually uh, make you a co-host so that you can present yourself, showcase yourself, and you have the floor, sir. And thanks for the honor. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate the warm welcome. Yeah, so you can go ahead. Am I loud and clear? Go ahead. Uh, great. Uh, first of all, I I want to appreciate the organizers for uh, their tireless efforts in putting this event together. And I want to especially thank Mr. Amos for the opportunity he gifted me to say a few words at this World Summit Awards webinar. Uh, due to my own schedule, like he has already said, as the team lead of the Jury Justice and Rectors Advocates Initiative, and quite short notice, I had to come up with uh, you know, a small presentation for this August occasion. So please pardon me if I'm not too incisive with my points, but uh, I hope it's enough to challenge us that innovation and technology optimization is simply the future. And if Nigeria must be seen to be competitive in the thing, imagine fifth uh, industrial revolution, we must be able to ensure that Nigerians embrace innovation. Uh, I'll quickly run through my, my short uh, you know, speech because I, I tried to come up with one. Uh, so uh, before I, I do a little more breakdown, According to the 2020 ranking of the World Intellectual Property Organization, Nigeria is ranked 117 with 20.1 points of about 80 points on the Global Innovation Index. 
it ranks the most innovative country. This index also ranks the most innovative countries in each World Bank income group and evaluates, evaluates the nations across 80 innovation indicators like research and development, high technology production, venture capital, intellectual property receipts, computer software spending, ICT services export, high technology net exports, even university environment research, amongst others. And on the index, Switzerland, Sweden, USA, UK, the Netherlands, Denmark, Finland, Singapore, Germany, South Korea, Hong Kong, and China rank from 1 to 11, respectively. China and uh, Hong Kong, uh, they share the 11th spot. So innovation can be very instrumental to the success of economies, which is poignant from the GDP of these top 11 countries, their per capita income, the efficiency and ease of integration of their systems, the quality and reliability of their data, the level of data optimization and collection. And indeed, like, we're, we're, like we see, like we've heard uh, that they are the ones that come up with very, very superb technology uh, products and innovation. So in such countries, data is just life because they are data-driven, they are innovation, Focused. In fact, uh, there were times when you know China started its innovation by, you know, uh, replicating certain brands and products. That was how they even emerged, and they did that just so fast. But the very interesting thing about this pre-jury selection is that innovation and technology is behind it. And more importantly, it is data-driven. Technology and innovation thrive on data, which is information about activities or events translated into form that is efficient for movement and processing. As an advocate of the introduction of jury trials, I value data because for honest citizens to be seamlessly and randomly selected, you must have their data and of course, digitally and not analogly process and analyze them to be able to come up with who should be a juror or not, indeed. And the process of uh, screening prospective jurors begins from the access of electronic database of states registration agencies, the NIMC, the FRSC, the INEC, and several other databases before which we can uh, have the citizens contacted, and then they, of course, have to most often fill their prospective forms online. You know, then afterwards they now come up and then we do a pre screening and all of that. But you see, the entire process is all about innovation. When we're talking about citizens' engagement, when we're talking about governance, even the finance sectors, we now have fintech ruling the world. In fact, fintech today is uh, is, is much more priced in terms of uh, the assets and the venture capitals that they have, you know, attracted. They are as much higher than uh, you know our top five, top ten banks. If you even put them together, you know, so. For us, innovation technology drives the process. And so in a bid to optimize data, the data sets collected must be electronic for us and functional and futuristic. Besides promoting the jury system, which is going to open up the space for citizens participation via the technology, of course, and of course, to create a platform for citizens engagement, you know, to bring the communal spaces closer together so that we can share our views on national issues in the courtroom. I, I, when I joined in, I, I, I got a uh, glimpse of his last uh, comments about 
you know, technology and uh, as jurors, what we should be putting forward. And he goes back to say that uh, as, um, sorry, as, um, you know, innovators, what we should be putting forward to the jurors. And this is the same process for the lawyers and the counsels who will be now putting forward their best foot, the best argument they have, the evidence. And you see, the, the court system is beginning to adopt what they call the front loading system, where cases are now much more streamlined, how they get into the, to, to get the reads, to file for, to file their cases and all of that. The process is getting streamlined, is adopting technology, which means that Technology is the future. And we are saying that if we must deepen citizens' engagement, technology has to be incorporated. Innovation has to be taken as the bedrock of those processes. And that's why in our own process, we are launching both data collection tools to supplement the NIMC processes whereby more data is collected. We're talking of uh, fingerprints, facial recognition, machine learning uh, technology. We are incorporating all of this into the processes to be able to minimize data theft or you know, people impersonating the others all of these processes and then streamlining the, you know, the use of data such that the data is quite functional. If you want uh, data in, for example, the banking sector, all you need to do is have a security clearance. And then if you, you have that clearance, you can access that data, but the data is now integrated which is where we are pushing for. And the more we have citizens in the processes, the more they are willing to give that data, just to share the activities that are supposed to even be public records. And they are holding them back because, you know, in Nigeria, we all, all, all always feel that, <laughs> that uh, our data, for example, is, uh, is too private. But of course, once we are talking of innovation, we must also come with our line to say, where does privacy stop? Where does uh, national security commence? And for a lot of all this, the first 11 countries that I earlier mentioned, you know, in the World Intellectual Property Organization ranking, more than 65% of their activities, individual activities are collected as data. And they are, this is what builds the system for them to be able to easily identify the citizens. So if there's a crime, it's easier for them to always go and say, ah, let's check the records. Let's identify, let's trace a person. And this is what we are trying to achieve with the jury system here. By the time we, we have a broader citizen's participation in the processes, both of jury selection, because once people, you know, fill in as prospective jurors, it's a public participation process for us. People will be able to say, I know person A, person B, person C, and I know it's not an honest uh, Nigerian. He has done this, he has done that, he has done this. And these are evidence to show that it cannot be a juror that will satisfy justice for our society or for our community. They can always come up with such evidence. But if those data are not available, if the public also does not have the opportunity to participate, then we already have, we, we, we start getting into the hands of those who feel that in Nigeria, jury system cannot work because everybody's corrupt. I put it to us today that if we speak for ourselves, we would realize that there are so many incorrupt Nigerians, so many honest Nigerians, so many patriotic Nigerians who are doing legitimate businesses, who are making ends meet, and they're doing fantastically fine. Yes, the system may look skilled, 
But of course, there's still a lot of incorrupt Nigerians. And we cannot say that with technology, we cannot identify those persons. We must be able to identify them, which is how we are deploying our jury selection processes so that as much as possible, we can minimize the intrusion of persons with questionable characters to get on to jury panel and then adjudicate issues. And then we say, ah, no, X, Y, Z was a, was a bad person. How did they get to become a juror? No, the world has emerged with innovation so that we can capitalize on technology as well to show the world how being better people or, or creating better societies can really work. The processes are not idiots. They are not so difficult. But of course, we must also know that if we are building innovation, if we are designing innovation, we must build for the future while creating value for the present because that's the only sustainable way to innovate. And that is the only way that we can guarantee that our innovation will not be obsolete, but it would only eliminate reinventing the wheel when the future arrives. And that would also give the future generations the edge of competitiveness. The computer age, the first generation computer has come and gone, but everything that happened then till date has just been not reinventing the wheel, but building on it. But if they had come up with a design that, I mean, the calculators are still very, very much with us. And those are part of the innovations of the first generation and second generation computers. So if we can come up with innovations that will give you know, the future generations the leverage, a springboard for them to you know, see the future better and say, they got this far, then we must go that much. I mean, uh, uh, innovation, look at the airplane, for example. You know, those are innovations. The, the, the first four generations have incorporated the trial by jury system into their systems. In fact, we also have another policy, which is um, Youth Emancipation Trust Fund, and another one that's going to be launched, uh, informal sector reform for harmonize tax for informal workers to get to give them uh, what, what they call uh, value added social services. Now those things require that data collection is incorporated into the system. And we're talking of fingerprint facial recognition with deep machine learning. Now, once we have this data, we can easily deploy social services. Our system can be fully integrated and functional. And that is the future that we are looking at. That is what we are pushing. And that is what we are currently working on. Because we know that for us to have such a functional society, we must innovate for the future. But again, we must create the opportunity so that this innovation, this technology can all be integrated and create value for each other. In, in, in some of our, our, our analysis, uh, when we do economic analysis, our team does what they call, uh, uses the multidimensional poverty uh, index. Now that's, we, we, we always do that to come up with a solution such that any policy we are pushing out must address at least two of the multidimensional poverty indexes. That's, and they are four, one, education, health, unemployment, and uh, standard of living. So any system that is being built, any innovation that's been built must not address only one thing, despite its unique selling points. It must address at least two issues that must find connectivity so that it can be integrated into other systems. That is how we look forward to building a future. But if we build to address a singular issue, uh, it will become obsolete in the nearest future because once that particular issue that you addressed at that point is not more an issue, forget it, that your system is there, that innovation is buried at that point. 
But by the time you address several issues, it will enhance the it will enhance it metamorphosing into something that can be built upon, that can be translated to even solve future problems. That's why we don't look from one perspective, one side of the coin. You must look at the issues from several perspectives because that is what they do. That is what the UK, the US, the Netherlands, that's what they put into context when they are innovating. They don't in innovate because they, they want to come to a competition and just win the big box. They innovate because they are solving real life issues and not singular issues, multiple issues per time. And I, I, I didn't really prepare much. My uh, speech is very, very, uh, you know, it's, it's not well written, it's not incisive, but I, I should, I should say again that before I conclude finally that we can build a functional and secular integrated digitized society that thrives on data, but we must always, as they say, usually that innovation, uh, you know, necessity is the model of invention. But then we must also know that the future is the necessity, not just the present. The future is a necessity. And at least if we do if we do it well, if we get it right in our innovation, I'm telling you, agencies like the NOTAP will come back alive and they will be they will they will they will be willing to play significant roles, you know, technology transfer, intellectual properties, all of those things. We'll find the, the environment, the climate will be much more enhanced for us to innovate and achieve what we want both for our communities, for Nigeria, even our states, and of course, to be competitive globally. So on that note, I want to thank um, uh, WSA, the World Summit Awards uh, Pre-Selection Committee for this opportunity. And uh, thank you. I wish thank everyone you. the best. Thank you. thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so very much, Mr. Shemam, I'm so impressed. Yes, sir. I can see I can see the passion, and um, obviously with innovation, innovation is actually something that makes you it makes you happy even when you are not there yet. But you see, because you've got that confidence, because you, you are powered by the confidence that you have at the goal, and of course you you know what it is to get there. I'm sure um, the first time I got to. Um, hear about what you do and what all this is to interplay over a short period, I was actually, I was inspired. And I think this is actually the kind of thing we need to encourage and promote. And um, we try to see everything that's got to be done so that at least we can actually give this the foundational um, uh, infrastructure that this country truly deserves. And then um, that's also very good coming from a very young man like you, and some. And, um, <laughs> we think um, every other person should follow suit and um, uh, follow follow this journey, uh, follow this journey, so that um, we can all save this country together. Um, thank you so very much once again, and I think um, that leaves us with um, some comfort that um, Nigeria is actually on the right track, particularly when the young people. Uh, take charge of what uh, they know, what they do, to ensure that um, perhaps we can help this leadership uh, so that um, we, we can see what exactly that they are doing wrong and what we think we can do to help. And that is the whole essence of you um, building the nation alongside your leaders. So thank you once again. I appreciate you. Um, I will, because this session was not just supposed to be a conference, was not supposed to be another workshop, but an, ex uh, an expression of what we are doing. And uh, of course, to show the world we are doing these things. And that's the whole essence of what we, what we call the programs we call the pre-selection, you know, um, work. It's not, um, it's gonna be, it's not gonna be something that we're gonna waste um, uh, too much of time over. And um, I will seize this opportunity to give, um, um, uh, my friend from Gombe, has had network problem that uh, we've not been able to hear of um, Aji Abubakar Bashir. Aji Abubakar Bashir, can you just um, try once more? Can you try once more so that we can hear you from Gombe?
this young man is doing extremely very well in the area of getting governments to manage flooding across Nigeria. And I'm happy. Um, at the stage he is right now, and um, he's also been uh, someone who has been on the on this part of um, the World, World Summit of Work Project and uh, this thing, but then we have to mentor and ensure that over a period of time, the product can be ripe and good enough that, in fact, we are happy about now that even the World Bank is engaging and working with them in some states in Nigeria. So, um, Mr. Favor Adeleke, let's have your final word. What do you think? What's the hope? And what is actually, what do you think? And how do you think you can help? these undergraduates who are currently in schools. Mr. Adeleke, take it from Um. Okay. So what we've been able to do at Kiki Farms is that we've been able to train well over 500 youth, you know, um, grad undergraduates, both graduates, we've trained them both online and offline, and on our strategy to scale and even do better, we want to train other young people so they can see the vast and lots of limitless opportunities in their cultural value chain, from processing to value addition to market and sales to input to market. You know, the, the, the value chain is just so much. On just one product alone, you can see about other uh, 16 other value chains of the product line. Like for instance, you're gonna talk about livestock. So livestock, we have the meat, we have okay, it's ready to eat as soon. We have the we have the milk. People sell the urine and feces. You know, they use the horn for designs and artifact things like that. So it has so much. So when you're talking of fruits as well, the value addition is wide as well. We have the seed, the seedlings, which is very important. We have the machineries, we have the greenhouses. We have the fertilizers and the likes. So I, I can keep naming on and on. We are basically trying to educate them to see that there is a lot of things that they will be able to do in the value chain. And we have a track record of people who has gone through our training and they are doing something very well of themselves. They're able to run their own farms, right? So these are things that we've been able to do. And these are things that we are doing even more because trust me, the future of this country is in the hands of the youth. And agriculture is the best tool to drive this country's economy forward. Because trust me, the world demand is just so much. You understand? The demand for cotton, the demand for cocoa, the demand for rubber, the demand for sesame seeds. Look at how the demand is, right? So this is time for us to add value to what we have. So we can create more job opportunities for the youth and make more money from what we are doing, Excellent. right? The amount Excellent. that they'll buy a raw cocoa is even from how much they'll buy refined cocoa. So this is time for Nigerians to be able to add value to whatever is going out of this country. So thank we you. can create more job opportunities for the youth to make thank more you, money. Thank you. Then thank the economy you. will thank go you. forward. Thank you so very yeah. much. Thank you so very much, Mr. Favo Adeleke there. And um, I'm very, very particularly impressed that every, uh, all the players that play today, you know, when, when you come to Innovation Bed, we have many of you guys that will play. You will give you jerseys and numbers to play. And I'm sure you can see the justice that um, you can see the justice that um, uh, yeah okay great you can see the justice uh, that um, the, um, our dear brother Mr. Shamamo has just um, delivered just <laughs> for that small time and uh, Mr. Shamamo was able to give us a very 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 very, very powerful presentation and um, as we are just planning to round up uh, we have our our special guest back because he's been looking up, he's actually been waiting, and uh, in fact, he's very much interested. And that's actually um, the special, uh, the senior special assistant to the executive governor of um, Nasarawa State. And um, he's just back to the house. So we'll just give him the floor to help us close the event. And of course, say hi to everybody here. And I'm sure this video will be available for him to spend some time to know what Nigerians are doing and we can do better. And that is the whole essence why Innovation Bed Africa and the Incubation 230 is to engage every citizen, to engage every enterprise, and of course, use this to be able to, be, I mean, to create prosperous regional economies in Nigeria very soon. And I'm very happy at their nod at our project 
as, um, as you can see him show here. Um, your Excellency, Honorable Sonny, Harun Sonny, you're welcome, sir. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. <laughs> I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful, um, wonderful time. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Interaction with our, with, uh, with our with our youth. I'm so happy. As you a special appreciation to the executive governor, Nasarawa State, on this occasion. Thank you, <laughs> thank you sir. You you hear your your response soon, sir. That's right. Um, thank you so much. I believe the youth are are, are connecting and also giving. To the whole world that Nigeria at large has uh, people, innovative people, and people, youth, they can talk on Nigeria and also give away this technology to everyone in the whole continent and uh, in the whole world. Like we all know, Nigeria has a lot of people, youth in technology, which we have, for instance, when you look at the current situation in Nigeria in terms of technology, the DG of NIDA is also part of the youth, and the way I look at it, and is a DG for NIDA. And also, when you look at the EFCC boss, too, is a youth. And I believe they know how technology is versatile and also helping the youth in the whole country to harness the situation of unemployment and all that. I believe you help them to take this to the higher stage, you help them to understand the concept behind their own technology innovation, and also you help them for the whole world to see and the UN to know that Nigerians are producing a lot of innovators. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Excellency, my regards and special uh, regards to the, the state administration. Thank you so very much. So, Mr. Thank Shabobo, you so much, sir. Thank you for my, uh, yeah, my presenters much, and all the... Uh, Mr. Fever Adeleke, Aji Abubakar Bashir from Gombe, thank you so very much. And I think on these notes, I'll say we can close this program. Thank you so very much once again. And of course, this video will be available, will communicate to every other person, every other producer from every, many other parts of the country that could not join us because of connectivity problem. We actually understand and will be very fair. And the good thing about it is that I still have five days before the 30th of September so we'll seize this opportunity to work with each and every one of them one-on-one, -on -one, and we have a fair democratic assessment within myself and the team I've come up with on the national pre-selection of the country for us to have representation across all the eight categories as a um, representation of um, innovation from Nigeria for the year 2021. Thank you so very much for being a part of this. I'm very happy. Amos Emmanuel, on behalf of the World Summit Awards, a, a very, very, very pleasant day and a pleasant um, weekend we have for everybody. Or do we have anyone who has a message for the, uh, because it's not easy to say, to see SSAs or ICTs. Mr. Shamama, please do you have a word for my honorable? Uh, honorable, sir. Uh, it's a pleasure to know that uh, you are joining in as a, as a front runner for the youth. Please keep it up and uh, let the Zamfara State embrace it for the youth. Because no, no, sorry, I know you are doing quite a lot across Nigeria. Right now, you are even speaking while you are on transit. And you are doing so much to engage the National Assembly at different areas. And I'm happy I got to identify with you. I got to discover you very, very, uh, very recently. But we have come to realize so much that we're going to gonna do ahead of time. So in the course of all this, these gentlemen, with these opportunities and, and the, 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 the opportunity they, they get as senior special advisors, really need to identify with some of us in the society, we will make noise, but quite frankly, what we do, we have records of the country as against people who don't even have records. And they don't even believe that, we, that, that can ever be homegrown people. As I speak to you, I can share with you that Nigeria and the kind of innovation we have in this country, we can actually help ourselves. We can recreate this country by the local capacities that we already have. And you can audit us. I happen to be the chairman, Information Technology Association of Nigeria, Lagos State Chapter, and I've been vice president of ITAN many years back now. The issue with Nigeria is that many of us in leadership do not even trust the local and homegrown efforts. 
because we do not even believe in them. How do you even want to be, want to begin to consume what is produced in Nigeria? By my experience, I run a software company and for 25 years, if you are an investor and you buy and sell shares, my software company has been providing software service in this country for 25 years that we do not have foreign influx like we have in banking. An average stockbroker in this country has been using my software and local options in the last 20 years. I have been in this country. I don't think I've been in Accra today, but I have customers using my software in Accra, Stan Big Bank and SBG Securities in Accra using my software. And they are products done by Nigerians. So I'm a very strong and powerful believer of an underserved young girl or young boy in Nasarawa village that can be changed. His, his or her life can change over time with little opportunity. Oh, this even gives me an opportunity because I'm speaking from my office here and um, I can share with you some ideas that what I mean by innovation bed is not just by word of mouth. Here, I have people that I have trained. These are graduates. I don't care what you read in school. You either you're an you English graduate, you are a philosophy graduate, you are a physics graduate. I have many of them here. My research, I've done this many years over. I bring you in, give you the business process of what you plan to get in life, anywhere you plan to go. Because I, my niche is in the Nigerian capital market and I saw manpower problem. You know what I did? I trained, this was 2007 at my 10th anniversary. And I trained roughly about 560 undergraduates, I mean, graduates that were jobless. You must be jobless to qualify. And within two months, by the time I'm done with you, you can now go, I'll write to you, go to an organization, go and speak with them. When you go there, don't even tell them you're coming from programmers or coming from Amos Emmanuel. As you go there to relate with the executives of those organizations, that organization will automatically employ you because they are looking for someone like you. All these people, they were all absorbed in Nigerian capital market in different companies. In fact, in Abuja, some were employed in Tido Securities in Labor House, in Finmal, Aladi Paranga, on a Nitel opposite Nigerian reinsurance in Abuja. And so many. In Kano, you have Kundila, you have Monument Securities, you have Gidownia. All these guys were trained and I supply them free training, free supply. Because when you want to help, please help. You know why? These people are graduates. They may not even have one cobble. When you say, come and pick one million Naira, they may not even have one Naira to come to transport to come and pick your one Naira or your one million Naira. The fate of graduates in this country is that bad. And to be frank with you, by the time the lives of all these guys have changed, for me, I feel happy for them because till today, they remain grateful. Amongst them, you have this an accountant, this is an chemical engineer, he read marketing. He, this one now is the MD of a stockbroking firm in Nigeria today, from nothing. He runs, in fact, he just resigned from a stockbroking firm now, I understand the man was bought and paid three times the salary in another stockbroking firm now, is to tell you that we are not lazy. Sorry, when I say we, the younger ones, because I'm 50 plus now. <laughs> so I'm talking for the children level and my grandchildren level, <laughs> you know? So, and that is it. Then when we talk about World Summit, World Summit track record has been there every year. If you can see this, this is yeah, my announcement sure. for 2018. This is World Summit Awards Nigerian National Nominees. These were the winners, just like what I'm doing right now. People will emerge like this for 2021. And out of these people, we have something for government citizens engagements. You have e-learning, education, business and commerce, settlement and urbanization, healthcare and well-being, then inclusion and empowerment. And in 2018, this guy here, that produced carrot.ng was a winner and was celebrated in Cash Cash in Portugal. So 
If you look at the UN World Summit and World Celebrations anywhere in the world, if you look at our 10 year anniversary, 10, the entire 10 year, you see at least a product from Nigeria. But that does not say that yeah, Africa is doing well. On a continental basis, they are not performing well because we do 5% of the entire innovation of, on this, on this yeah. principle, whereas for 5% goes to Europe. Now, for 2019, yeah, sure. you had, check it up. I don't know whether you hear the word check it up. Recently, they've been in the news because they just secured $500 million, $500 million or some $500 or whatever, whatever dollars. That is check it up. It was identified on this platform. You know, so we are really very grateful that we collaborate with people all over the world we collaborate with all these people all over the world to subject our local problems, our shanties, our ghettos. Look at the problem all over. There is no state in Nigeria that does not have a ghetto, that does not have a shanty. Yet we yeah. bring smart energy technology, educational technology, open data, smart mobility, home, smart home, smart uh, you know, uh, e-commerce and health. To turn around our environment, you can never buy a, a digital economy. We have to we have to create a, a digital economy by, by empowering our people. And once you are done, look at this. This looks more decent city. These people never bought it. They also walked. <laughs> so this is what you mean, the journey well, of it's, innovation. It's, so it's, it's, it's a very, very long journey. It's, it's, yeah. And we have to go in yeah, together, sure. we have to do it together. And we are happy sure. when we have people like this, our brother here, Honorable Sonny, our big brother that's supposed to join me, you can't believe it. All my messages have not delivered on his phone because, and I can understand because of connectivity. We chatted last, yeah, last okay. night and every other message has not delivered. But I'm sure oh. we'll be out of these problems very soon. Yeah, by very soon, very soon. Thank you so much sir, for your wonderful um, creativity to our youth. And I think uh, exactly like you said, when the coming of uh, my elder brother here, uh, the, the uh, Dr. Kashifu, the NIDA, the DG uh, NIDA, he has made it clear for the Nigerians to uh, uh, to abide by the constitutional activities by using the, con the local content developers. You know, most of the things that is happening in Nigeria is that the way you said it, we actually don't use to patronize our local content developers, which makes them sometimes very, very uh, hectic for them to go back and start uh, all this issue of proud cybersecurity issues and all that. But as far as we are using them, we are making them to be more important to the community. We, we, can, we can get those kind of issues. Instead of us to have be, be having an attack by the cyber crime and cyber security experts, we'll have them protecting the interests of our country. This is how we're supposed to be doing. This is what we're supposed to have. And I, I, I assure you that my other brother, the DG Nida is doing his best to come up with solutions of all this. With your help, I believe this, our local content developers will be very, will, will, will see their importance in the country and also will make use of that particular knowledge to use it in a very, in a very clear and also manually way um, to achieve a very good end well, and importance well. to the country. Well, I will. Thank so, you so much. Thank you. Hmm. I will implore um, so, your honorable. I will implore you, honorable, yes, sir. to help us sell this to particularly the um, uh, the honorable minister. You know, His Excellency Dr. Esa Pantani of the Minister of Communication, Digital, and Digital Economy. You see, we I don't really do much with yeah. government people. You no, know, I have to tell you how I am. You know, because for me to have achieved what I've done. What I'm doing here is beyond me, is beyond a lot of people. If I had messed up this project, I would have been myself a disappointed human being. It, it, what I'm doing is a volunteering <laughs> job. Naturally. And I've done this all my life. Yeah. I have my business I face. 
if that makes me eat, I eat. And I'm practically very happy. In fact, as I'm talking to you right now, we have actually my office and hub is in Lekki. I'm relocating. But guess what? I am my relocation is not does not even affect my work, especially when it's got to do with what I'm, with what I'm doing. As you can see with my environment, my bookshelf, all my books, I just moved them yesterday. All my shelves are empty because I'm moving them to my new environment and all that. Because in Lekki here, if you hear about Lekki, there is flood problem. The governments are not interested. There are major solutions for flooding, but people are not even looking at such correctional roadmaps. People are looking at different directions. You see, when you look yeah. at Nigeria and live in Nigeria, like the Nigerians youth are fed up for now, you will never want to stay here. You want to leave this country. And you don't have another country. And the youth of today have to stay back here and put back all that they know, what they can do to help this government. And you, can, you must not fail that. In my principal incubation, you have to identify the people who are either the elderly, the youth, the young, gender inclusive. You know, balance them. Yeah. Later, our enterprises, even the man selling, the woman selling bread on the streets, the young men have to think about that because the woman in itself, the woman selling bread is running an enterprise. So we have to help the woman to improve on her business so that she can earn better as an innovator, as you are thinking about improving the well being of another human being in your society. You are in, indirectly making your life for the future prosperous in the imagined world. So it's not about a government want a government's responsibility. Those people will do far more. The project that we're actually putting together here for the workforce of government that we're supposed to do on the 1st of October, we have postponed it till towards the end of October or thereabout. The whole essence is that we've been on this research for a long time with the United Nations ICT for seats, and these things were designed for developing countries. You can't cut corners. If people doing the right thing will still see their monies if they can still do the right thing. And they will be so happy that the environments have become so transformed, and of course, of the century that is good and that can make the, make the environment more livable. So I think we want some closeness. And I wouldn't want it to look as if it's in competition or one is looking for certain favors or thereabout because I just did my day. But then, quite frankly, I will give you one news that NIDA, the Federal Minister of Communication Technology, have become the most dynamic yeah. in the tenor sure. and reign of the environment that I have known of. But guess what? The dynamism might not be of the true value. But to be frank with you, I have weighed and I'm working with all of that. And I can still give it to them that if they just continue on that track, we are doing very greatly. There shouldn't be favoritism. Sure. There shouldn't be any place. We should look at this Nigeria. This Nigeria project can work. It won't be by noise making. Just yeah, look, at, sure. look at last year. I sponsored 10 scholarships for youth from 10 states. And we got Professor Umar Amjad, the director of graduate program at the Harrisburg University, to train them. As I'm speaking with you, 10 youth from 10 states, Gombe, Edo, Ogun, Katsina, Taraba, Kano, FCT, and so on, about 10 of them. We got them trained. Right now, if I have a program in your state, I have capacity because I've trained people. I'm not yeah, saying that sure. the only ones. The university, Harrisburg University, UNICD for Seeds, my global network of national experts are there to back me up. I sure. will give these people what they need. All I need is the patronage of the, lo the local people in leadership. They have the money. When I had yeah. the money, I knew my result and I knew what I got. This, with my money and my sweat, I saw the result in my eyes, but I was not waiting for anybody to do that for me. And I'll be the last to go looking for one loan. I don't work with loans. I work whatever I can eat from, I'm good. And that's why my 25-year software company is one of the longest standing in Nigeria in the capital market. And there's no foreigner that's taking us or displaced us. If you talk to the Nigerian Stock yeah. Exchange or any stockbroker, uh, I think in Nasarawa, I don't think there's any uh, stockbroker in Nasarawa. But then um, PIPC is in Jaws. Call PIPC today. PIPC has been using my software for more than 21 years. Yes.
from the era of their former governor, um, Darie, um, the executive governor of Darie, the first my installation I had in George, he said, the man that installed your software, he wants to see him. The governor invited me for dinner in George many years ago because I queried the accounts. And in fact, my specialization is I offer investment solutions for any state investment and property management organization. If you have that in Nasarawa, please, my company does that. Already we are doing something for our dear brother who leads the similar investment company in Katsina, who was also in stockbroking and he was using my software. So they know. You know, so we want, we do things that people reference us by what we do. And so are young Nigerians. We are not beggars. We are not beggars. No, not really. So not really. That is the way they should not be. Really. And every government that does this sincerely will be valued for life. Will be valued for life. Because it might not be, it might be something yeah. you germinate today, but it's actually these are the seeds that a digital economy needs to have. And it won't be by money or budget or what have you. It's not always money. It won't be open always money. So, your neighbor, thank you so much. I, I, in fact, I'm feeling thank I'm you feeling so much. I'm yeah. feeling because I'm having someone very superior like you to talk to, and I'm sure at some of our future thank programs, you. like uh, we plan, we actually plan all my innovators. We plan what we call innovation. I mean, we come what we call like innovation tour of the presidency and national assembly. I'm sure Mr. Shoma is aware of this. And okay. of course, by the time we get all the guys behind us, we know we want to make a statement. We're not in competition. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Very, very Thank glad. you so much for a wonderful time. Thank you. So, Thank, you, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. uh, Mr. Ibrahim Lukman. Ibrahim. Ibrahim Lukman, please, your word. Let me, uh, it's like um, uh, we forgot it was still there. Mr. Ibrahim Lukman is actually, that is the producer of VR Cloud, a health management system solution. Okay. If he's still there, Adi Ibrahim. Yeah, he's still there. Okay, please. Can you hear us? Please just unmute yourself. Please say a word. <laughs> he has presented earlier anyway. But then I wanted to just please unmute yourself if you are still your connection is still active and you are there. Otherwise, thank you so much. Uh, I'm so impressed. And look at that. I, I got to know you just because. I got to know somebody just miraculously too, and that is in the person of Honorable <laughs> Mohammed Tambura, you know? Mohammed well, Tambura. Madam, I was just doing my yeah. work planning for a, a, a thousand movement campus undergraduate, and then they called me from Zamfara that they want to be party to my program. I said, why not? Why not? <laughs> but then an outsider would think there's one major thing you are doing and what have you. I feel grateful that this is happening and that relationship is there because to be frank with you, if I've done this in my home, in my house, I can do this anywhere in the world. <laughs> and we have the network, we have all that it takes. And it won't be by it yeah. will not be the same formula. So thank you so very much, sir. I quite quite thank quite you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for making this program a success for me today. So I'll be briefing. Sure, you. Thank you. I'll be briefing. I'll be briefing you on the on the outcomes, and of course, the final results will be in the media, obviously. All right, no problem. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, bye bye.